Welcome back YouTube. Today's video is going to cover something I've touched on in the past with a budget PC build and that is the incredible value of Intel's very first Core i processors designed to work on the LGA 1156 platform. These chips offer solid value and can still handle many of today's most popular games. The CPUs we'll look at are based on two architectures which cover a broad range of consumer, enthusiast, and server grade parts. The first being Nehalem, the earlier of the two and built on a 45 nanometer manufacturing process, and Clarkdale, which came later, built on 32 nanometer parts. These successor architectures made improvements by leaps and bounds over the Core 2 lineup that it replaced and brought hyper-threading technology back into Intel's CPU roster. Nowadays these chips can be had for a song, and in this video we'll see just how much that song can buy you. Meet the stars of the show. The two-core four-thread Core i3-540, launched in January of 2010, the quad-core i5-750, launched in September of 2009, and finally, to fill the top-end segment, the four-core eight-thread Xeon X3450, also launched in September of 2009. This video does showcase overclocked results, but it is not a clock-for-clock -clock comparison. Instead, it is a representation of the real capabilities of each of these chips to include the clocks they're able to achieve. We'll see how that affects each of these chips soon in our testing. As far as parts are concerned, all of these CPUs will slot into any consumer grade H55 or P55 motherboard, and we have one of the better examples of those on hand for testing purposes, the ASUS P7 P55D. Accompanying this build will be our trusty G-Skill Sniper DDR3-1600 memory, and graphics will be pushed through a GTX 1660 Ti. Power is supplied by a RealPower EcoSilent 600. This power supply is 80 plus rated, but disappointingly only provides 456 of those rated watts on the 12 volt rail, which is still enough for our GTX 1660 Ti. Finally, keeping everything cool is the Noctua NHU-12P. Overclocking was done by base clock, and the i3540 achieved a 3.9 GHz overclock, the i5750 a 4.2 GHz overclock, and finally the x3450 got a 3.9 GHz overclock on all cores. It is important to note one difference between these tests for these CPUs, and that is the i3540 and its cousin the i3530 require different RAM configurations from the i5 and the Xeon. Due to its memory controller, uh, it can only handle four DIMMs of two gigabytes, four DIMMs of one gigabyte, uh, four, two DIMMs of four gigabyte, or two DIMMs of two or one gigabyte. In each case, totaling no more than eight total gigabytes of memory. The i5 and Xeon were both able to take advantage of a full 16 gigabytes with no problems whatsoever, but failing to meet this criteria when building with the i3540 will result in a failure to boot, so keep this in mind if you build with it anytime soon. Before we jump into testing, all results were recorded at 1080p through GeForce Experience, and we're running the latest 441.87 NVIDIA drivers. Recording saw FPS take a hit on FPS across most of our games, so understand that footage seen here, while of the actual system, is not representative of recorded FPS values in testing. Those values are instead obtained using a six game average with no recording active. First in the lineup are the Cinebench R20 values. Here we see the Xeon X3450 completing its run. The i3540 got a modest 636 points at its absolute best, falling a scant 10 points short of the i5-750 at stock. Meanwhile, when overclocked, the i5-750 shows impressive gains of up to 978 points, representing a roughly 50% increase to score and performance in this particular test, and knocking on the door of a mildly overclocked Xeon X3450 at 3GHz. Finally, after stretching its legs up to 3.9GHz, the Xeon achieved the highest score of the bunch, with a result of 1,281 points. A result of 1,316 points was obtained at 4 GHz, but ultimately this overclock proved unstable and clocks were brought back down to 3.9. Next we take a look at Firestrike's benchmark. Now Firestrike really takes advantage of the extra cores and threads in its benchmark and it truly punishes the i3540 with our lowest score of 8,606. 
The i5-750 fares better, coming in at 9747 with 4 proper cores over the i3. And lastly, the Xeon enabled a much more impressive 12338, far exceeding its competition. The first actual game in our lineup is Apex Legends. What surprised me here was that at the mixed medium settings, we scored an average of 96 and low of 50 FPS with our weakest CPU, the i3-540, in an experience that saw little to no stutter. It was quite playable and quite enjoyable, to be honest. Following that was the i5-750, which brought us up to a downright respectable 118 FPS, dipping occasionally to 70, and finally, a strong performance from the Xeon X3450 at 125 and 78 FPS, respectively. Next, we look at Monster Hunter World at the mid preset, and you can see that this game really punishes low core count, as the i3540 achieves similar results to what we saw in a previous video with the AMD Athlon X4, a chip that many could legitimately call a two core, four thread processor. This left us with a very unenjoyable and stuttery 32 average FPS. Things perked up considerably with the i5-750, and with it we got a lovely 55 average FPS, which by experience contrasted with a very smooth and very playable uh, playthrough hunting our Kulu Yaku, hopefully I said that right. Uh, and finally, our Xeon X3450 turned over a very respectable 79 average FPS with 1% low values of 60. Borderlands 3 also proved to be a surprisingly demanding title that asked too much, it seems, of the little i3540. We saw FPS averaging at just 44 and a very jarring 1% low of 13 FPS, making for a stuttery experience that was not very enjoyable at all. The i5-750 corrects this issue by pulling the FPS up to 77, while dipping occasionally to 34 FPS, a difference that may seem bad, but in practice was playable and mostly smooth. Finally, the Xeon leveraged its extra threads for 80 average and 48 1% low FPS. While the gains to average FPS were meager and barely outside the margin of error, the gains to 1% low value FPS was noticeable and easily made for the best experience of all three chips. PUBG is up next at the medium preset. This battle royale has come an incredibly long way in terms of its optimization and behavior with low-end hardware, and even the lowly i3 spit out a 64 FPS average at the medium preset, with mild stutter from a 1% low value of 28. The i5-750 does something incredible that I did not see coming, which is to take the performance of the GTX 1660 Ti and keep it at nearly 100% throughout gameplay. It achieved a crushing 117 average and 58 1% low FPS. Similar to Monster Hunter, this game likes its minimum core count to be 4 proper cores and punishes those who dare with any less. Bringing up the rear is our hyper-threaded server chip, which kept similar FPS values to the i5-750 but gave us a lovely increase to the 1% low values all the way up to 74 FPS and kept the, the 1660 Ti more definitively tapped out at 100%. Our final game is the ever-present Fortnite. Testing was done at the Epic preset, and predictably Fortnite played well with this Intel G4 setup across all chips. We also see the most anomalous results from across all of these games, which is that the Xeon X3450 did not see an advantage to the i5-750, despite hyper-threading being enabled. Instead, Fortnite found the higher core clock of the i5 to be better suited to it, and so we see better average and 1% low values from the i5. For those looking to pursue Fortnite competitively, however, I did test the Xeon at the lowest setting with the view distance maxed out. This returned a very competitive 237 average and 143 1% low FPS. Now, that was the last of our games. In conclusion, the i3-540 is definitely showing the limitations of less than four physical cores. It struggled in the newest titles, though if you're really pinching pennies, this roughly five US dollar part could still carry you through if you drop settings to their lowest. Pairing with something like a GTX 780 or HD 7970 are legitimate options. The i5-750 may be at the borderline in some of those modern games, but 
it's a smooth borderline, and in popular competitive multiplayer titles, it packs some serious punch for its age and price bracket. Finally, although it didn't hit the overclock CI5 could, the Xeon X3450 was the strongest processor in my opinion, allowing the GTX 1660 Ti to really run to its full potential and ensuring better 1% low values nearly across the board. If you're tech savvy and you're looking to build that gaming PC that'll let you dip your toes into the water without washing away all your money, the LGA 1156 platform could be your answer. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, if you got something out of this video, leave a like, comment, or subscribe. As always, this has been X-Ray Tech, giving you an inside look at PC hardware.